How are you going to make a decision on which dental school you will be attending? If you're an internationally trained dentist applying to dental school here in the United States, in this video, you will make a decision. Is it a dental school that is close by to where you live? Or is it a dental school that is going to be a little farther away so that you could go ahead and take that program to the finish line so you could be a licensed dentist practicing here in the United States. We're gonna go ahead and talk about a private school, which is how much is it gonna cost to go to these dental schools? For many years, we've had multiple dental assistants who have become dentists here in the United States. Now, most of them have been internationally trained dentist who has immigrated to the United States and wants to be a licensed dentist here. They've gone through the process of the application and have taken the licensing board to have a practicing dental license here in California, here in the United States. Now, we are in Northern California, Dr. Palos, and we are practicing in the city of Dublin in the San Francisco Bay Area. And here in the San Francisco Bay Area, we've got two dental schools close by the University of the Pacific and the University of California, San Francisco. Now, when you are applying to dental schools, are you gonna be applying to dental school that is close by to where you live? Or are you gonna be moving to a particular school that has accepted you that is not close by to where you live. Now, in California, there are seven dental schools. Six of them have a Dan Standing Dental Program for international dentists to take so that they can prepare themselves to be a licensed dentist here in the United States. We've got UCSF in Northern California. We've also got UOP in Northern California. And we've got four dental schools in Southern California, UCLA, USC, Western, and Loma Linda. Now, today we're gonna to be talking about UCLA, and then we're also gonna be talking about USC, and how do you get into these two programs if you're not gonna be applying close by to where you live, like here, we are definitely gonna be applying to UCSF and UOP. Now, one of the things that you've gotta make sure that you are doing is have a strategy of when you're applying to dental school. One of those strategy is where is the location? Where are you gonna be living in the next few years during this program when you are getting trained to practice dentistry and to make sure that you are passing that board exam to be licensed here in the United States. So one of the criteria that you wanna make sure that you are making is, am I gonna be far away from my family? Am I moving my family to the location of the school that I get accepted to? Or am I gonna be close by to where my home is, where my families are, and so that they are gonna be your support system while you're in dental school. Now, before you apply to dental school, you want to make sure that your application is competitive. Competitive in a sense of you've got good GPA, you've got good test scores, and you have prepared yourself to be a good candidate for the entrance in a particular class. Now, when we're talking about Southern California, we're going to go ahead and talk about a private school, which is University of California, Southern California, and then we're also going to be talking about the University of California, Los Angeles Dental School in this video. Now, what are the differences between these two schools? One of the things that you've got to look for besides location is how much is it going to cost to go to these dental schools? Now, I'm going to assume that you've got good GPA, good test scores, in the national board exam and then the TOEFL exam. You wanna make sure that that's all taken care of so that when you're applying, and then there is a process when you apply. Now, 
A lot of this information is available on the internet. We're looking at the first place that you have to do when you're applying for dental school is go to the ADEA, which stands for the American Dental Education Association. In this site, they have what they call the ADEA CAPID, which is CAPID standing for Centralized Application for Advanced Placement for International Dentist. The reason why this is important is because part of the application process is being able to gather up all your information submit it to a centralized location that the ADEA is able to provide you. And you've got to go to this one particular area, which is called the Centralized Application for Advanced Placement for International Dentists. This is where you put in all your information, the test scores that you've got, the GPA, your credentials, what school you went to in another foreign country. And then what happens is this centralized location is where they are able to go and submit applications for you to particular schools. Now, when you're applying to dental schools, you are also budgeting how much are you gonna be spending in this application process. There is a fee that has to go to the ADEA. And then there is another fee on the supplemental application that you are gonna be submitting to schools that you're gonna apply to. So what I would suggest is know where you want to go, budget your application process, and make sure that you're not spending unnecessary funds for schools that you are not qualified for. Information for, you know, on the internet, on your iPhone, Androids, on your laptop, every, all the information that I'm telling you is in here. Now, one thing that you want to make sure that you do is you do your due diligence and make sure that you make all the effort in finding out everything about that dental school that you want to apply to. In California, there are multiple schools that you're going to be applying to. You want to not just apply to one, but you do not want to get exorbitant in, in trying to apply everywhere. You could apply to all the dental schools in California if you live in California. You could also apply to schools in the East Coast and any place in between. There are 60, over 60 dental schools in the United States. Half of them have uh, an advanced standing dental program. Now, so now what we're talking about here is if we, I've, if we've already applied to the Northern California School, which is UCSF and UOP, what schools could we apply to that is comparable in Southern California? We could be looking at UCLA and we could be looking at USC. Now, if I was to look at um, the UCLA information and USC information, you've got advanced standing program for international dentists that is what they call at USC. Now, one of the things that you got to make sure is that you've got to figure out, am I qualified to go and apply to this school? Because they're only going to be accepting 30, between 30, 40 students. And that's basically what it seems to be most of these dental schools. They're going to be accepting international dentists in their program that is about 30 to 50. And so when we're looking at USC, we're looking at 34 students. So now the other thing that you want to consider when you're applying to these dental school is how much is it going to cost for me to go to that dental school? You've got two dental schools that we're talking about, USC and UCLA. The tuition seems to be about the same. Now, the difference is that if you are far away from your home, you are going to have to be paying for living expense. What I mean by living expense is uh, room and board, meals, and things like that, and also travel. If you're going home back and forth to your home base versus your school where you're going to be going to and where you live, you're going to have to go ahead and make sure that you're budgeting that. You are also going to be making sure that this is the program that you want to be in. Now, you know, USC is calling theirs advanced standing program. UCLA has a different 
name for their program. They're calling this PPID, which is Professional Program for International Dentists. They're basically the same program. They're about a two-year program, whereas in UCLA, you are going to start in the summertime and then get integrated into their third year and fourth year class who have been in dental school already for two years. So you're basically doing clinical work. So you've got to make sure that you know the program. You've got to make sure that is this the program that you want to be in. Now, when you're applying, you want to be sure that you've got good credentials to get in. And when you do have that, you could consider yourself in, in one of these universities. The problem would be if your application is not competitive, what do you do? At this point in time, when you're applying and you've got all your information in the centralized location where they're going to go ahead and submit them to dental schools, how could you strengthen your application? For USC and UCLA, the tuition is about the same. Um, maybe a little bit more at USC, but they're basically going to be about the same. What you're looking for is what information do I need so I could strengthen my application? You've got your GPA, you've got your test scores, you've got your letter of recommendations in from uh, deans or administrator in your home country. Now, what you've got to make sure that you're doing is knowing how dentistry is performed in the United States. And you could do that by making sure that you are assisting in a dental office, volunteering in a dental office so that you could have the experience that you could talk about in your interview and making sure that you, when you are writing your personal statement, you are putting all that information in, the information and the experiences that you've got in your home country and the information and experience that you've got here in the United States. Now, what you also got to do is make sure that you are asking for help with the people that are mentoring you. Well, these are the dental professionals that is going to be writing letter of recommendations for you when you enter these dental schools. So if you do your research at UCLA, they want to make sure that you're involved in the community, making sure that you are skilled in the dental task in a dental office. And same thing with USC. Now, one of the things that you're going to get before you get accepted is you're going to be invited for an interview to that particular dental school. One of the important things that you want to make sure that you're doing during the process of application is improving your skills on dental procedures particularly restorative dental procedures, uh, fillings, and also crown preparation. Those are the things that you could be working on during this time of application because once you get accepted to be interviewed, they're going to be inviting you to come in, interview, talk about your experiences before you get in, and they're also going to be seeing how good your skills are so that when you transition into the clinics in the dental school, you've got the skills and you've got the information that you need prior to getting in to make your education in the university a little bit more easier for you to get through the program. So one of the things that you've got to do to make sure that you're preparing for your dental school application is preparing yourself in the interview, preparing yourself in the skills of the restorative prep, and then you've got to make sure that you've got good credentials when you apply, you've got good GPA, you've got good test scores, 
and making sure that you are meeting all the requirements to apply so that you are not wasting your funds in this application process. So make sure you are subscribing to our videos. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.